Childhood trauma. You've probably heard that phrase before. It brings up old memories of the things that scared us as kids, and although every generation is different, the idea of being traumatized by something we've seen, be it a cartoon, movie, or video game, remains the same. Of course, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of my childhood trauma, more specifically, one involving an episode of a certain cartoon of which, I don't know, you've probably never heard of it. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> SpongeBob is a show that transcends generations, being nostalgic to millennials, Gen Z like myself, and it seems like Gen Alpha will follow. To explain every facet of this iconic show would waste everybody's time, so let's get back on topic. SpongeBob, being the long-running show that it is, is naturally gonna have scenes that just stick with people. A common one for most is the episode Wormy, due to this scene in particular. <laughs> I'll admit, that scene was pretty unnerving, but it wasn't that bad. Hell, the scene where Wormy does metamorphosis was more unsettling. Like, that's life right there. You see, if you want to look back at the most traumatic episode of Spongebob, we would have to go all the way back... ...to Season 1. In October of 1999, Nickelodeon would air Halloween-themed episodes of their cartoons to celebrate the season. This year in particular included the premieres of two Spongebob episodes, Scaredy Pants and I Was a Teenage Gary, the latter of which we are talking about today. Yes, this episode traumatized me as a kid, and yet... It doesn't seem that way for anyone else. I mean, you'd think SpongeBob's painful transformation would leave an impression on more people, but I guess I'm the only one. Regardless, this episode has, in fact, traumatized me. And in this video, I will explain why while also going over the episode itself. So, with that being said... Uh, hey, so I was just wondering if you... Are you ready, kids? Wait, aye, aye, what? Captain! What's going? I can't hear you. Aye, aye! Oh. 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 The episode opens up with that one shot of Gary on his wheel. <laughs> Uh, sorry. The episode opens up with that one shot of Gary on his wheel. You know, that one shot everybody references when they want a picture of Gary? Yeah, that one. You know what I'm talking about. SpongeBob takes him off the wheel and throws a toy for Gary to fetch before he takes a quick look at his watch and then goes to sit down and read a newspaper. Like, what is he, a Sims character all of a sudden? He then falls asleep and wakes up to see that Gary has retrieved the toy. And after celebrating the snail's accomplishment, Patrick comes barging through the door. Are you ready? Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? For what? The annual jellyfish convention in Ukulele Bottom this weekend! Sounds exciting to our favorite sponge, right? Well, there's just one problem. Gary can't be alone by himself. He needs someone to take care of him. But thankfully, somebody came just in time. SpongeBob asks Squidward if he can take care of Gary, but Squidward, being Squidward, doesn't want to. But once he hears that SpongeBob and Patrick will be gone for the weekend... Actually, a three-day weekend. Right. Apologies. Squidward decides that he'll do it. SpongeBob then shows Squidward how to take care of Gary, but that's the three-day weekend. Then, the bus... Spongebob's house for three days. Squidward then rushes back to Spongebob's house, where he frantically tries to make Gary feel better, but to no avail. Spongebob then enters the house, we get that one meme, <coughs> and Squidward tries to head back home when... <coughs> the veterinarian arrives later that night. Yes, yes, it's just as I thought. What? This is definitely a snail. <laughs> 
Wait, didn't I make this joke already? Because I could have sworn. The vet says that Gary needs to be injected with snail plasma, which is based off an actual medical practice involving injecting plasma to heal people. But the vet doesn't want to because he's too squeamish. And as soon as Squidward tries to leave, SpongeBob tells him that he can't inject Gary either because he's too squeamish. So Squidward is given the honor to inject the snail, but when he tries to do it, SpongeBob pulls Gary away for fear of Squidward hurting him. So they keep going back and forth until... Ouch! Uh, Squidward? You've injected me with snail plasma. SpongeBob is then worried about what might happen to him once injected. But Squidward thinks it's all nothing. And while they argue, Gary slithers to his water bowl, takes a sip, and... Meow. He just needed water. Yep, he just needed Gosh. water. So that's the end of the episode. Hold it! Oh. Right. We're only seven minutes into an 11 minute episode. There's plenty of time left. SpongeBob is still worried about the plasma in his system, but Squidward says he's fine. Whatever you say, Squiddy. Cut to SpongeBob filling Gary's food bowl, but SpongeBob decides that he wants some of that snail food goodness. And by some, I mean all of it. Sorry, Gary, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> Meow! Gary implies something is wrong, but SpongeBob assures he's just fine. He then walks over to the bathroom, getting slow with every step. And by the time he arrives there, we get the transformation sequence of all time. I'm gonna go home and throw up. Cut to Squidward getting ready for bed, when suddenly, there is a knock at his door. So Squidward decides to answer... Meow! The sight of SpongeBob's new form strikes fear into Squidward as he begins to barricade his doors and windows. But the sponge snail finds a way. So Squidward tries to hide from it. But the sponge snail finds a way. And so, a chase ensues around the living room. And yet... Okay, you get it by now. The chase continues, causing Squidward's house to be knocked over. But when Squidward comes out of the rubble... Uh -oh. We then get the second transformation sequence of all time. If the scene actually did exist, which it doesn't. It never did. It's just a hoax. It never happened. We then get Gary, Spongebob, and Squidward meowing to a song. Patrick then tells him to clam up. He throws a boot at Squidward. And the episode finally ends. Wait, that's it? But... Okay, let's go back a bit. Why did this episode traumatize me back then? Well, let's start with the obvious. When I first saw this scene at a very young age, it messed me up. Makes sense, considering the horror aspect of the scene, but it gets much deeper than that. Within psychology, there's a concept known as a schema. A schema is a sort of mental map we create in our head which helps us describe a person or object. For example, here's a schema of this guy. He's calm, monochromatic, and he's only five feet tall! Uh, I'm actually five foot seven. Similarly, we also create schemas about the cartoons we watch. For instance, SpongeBob is, well, a sponge. That's what we come to view him as. And yet, this scene right here violates that schema. Sure, if you're an adult, you can just assimilate, accommodate, and what have you, but you need to remember that I was a kid back then. Like, I didn't even have object permanence. So when I saw this scene, it messed with my mind because I could not comprehend seeing SpongeBob's body contorted to something unfamiliar. Like, that's not right! He's supposed to be a sponge! It gets worse when you factor in the other big reason as to why this episode traumatized me. Even though Spongebob and later Squidward are now snails, the episode just ends without them turning back. When I was a child, I believed that every story had a happily ever after and that ending should resolve all plots. Due to my naive view of storytelling, when I saw the episode end abruptly, I thought it meant that Spongebob and Squidward were snails forever. But that's wrong! Like, they can't end it now! They're still snails! Like, it can't be over yet! Oh, they're gonna be snails forever! <laughs> uh, hey, you good? Yeah.
Thanks. <laughs> okay. It didn't matter if they were fine by the next episode. I just felt bad for poor SpongeBob and Squidward. <laughs> Regardless, ever since watching that episode, I've never been the same. What, you thought Tank Tank Vroom Vroom fucked with me the most? Well, at least the Cholg made me laugh. The sponge snail, on the other hand, made me fear. When I was a kid, I feared many things. Insects, heights, roller coasters. But my biggest fear was that I might stumble upon this one episode again. Relive the trauma, so to speak. Like, whenever I was alone in a room with a turned off TV set, I was afraid that one transformation scene would play on it. And yet, it never did, because it only aired around Halloween due to its sister episode, Scaredy Pants. Even going into my teen years and later adult years, I would avoid this episode like the plague. For instance, whenever a YouTube video talks about the episode, like this one, I would make sure to scroll down so I wouldn't see the scene. For the vast majority of my life, I refused to associate with I Was a Teenage Gary except for the occasional meme and when I played the Cosmic Shake. Still, I've never managed to watch the episode in full. Until now. Hey everybody, it's Novaya. Today, I'm about to do something that I've refused to do for many years. Here we go! It's been so long, I'm worried. Oh man. Oh no. Yeah, this is why people don't like the episode, because Squidward's neglectful. Oh god, the scene is coming up. Uh-oh. Alright. Here it comes. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, here we go. That's okay. I'm a lefty anyway. Oh, this isn't as bad as I remember it. <laughs> wow. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. It's pretty hard to describe all the emotions I felt after finally watching this again. But one thing I will say is that it's sort of magical seeing more Spongebob content from its golden years that I haven't seen before. I had a similar feeling when I watched that lost chocolate milk ad back when it was found. It's just more content in the style people like best. The only difference being that I watched something everybody already saw. Whoops. Childhood trauma, as it's called, is a very weird thing. When we watch scary things growing up, they leave an impression on us. But if we were to go back to what frightened us as adults, we realized that they weren't as bad as we thought they were. As a fully grown adult woman, I am now able to see things more abstractly, and not just concretely like when I was a kid. Spongebob turns into a snail not because it violates the Geneva Convention, but because it's a reference to a 1957 film! Of course! So yeah, I really don't have anything else to say other than I am so glad to finally be over this episode for good. Now if you excuse me, I have to go wreak ass in CS2. Bye! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.